Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. Today I'm excited to bring you 24 different ways you can succeed at craft fairs in 2024. This is going to be a mix of old school and new school tips and I hope that it helps you to take your business to the next level at your events this year. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about today is embracing technology, specifically when it comes to using mobile payment systems and offering contactless payment options for your shoppers at your booth in order to make transactions go smoother. Another way you can embrace technology is to set up an online storefront either on your own .com website or on an existing platform such as Etsy in order to help drive sales in between craft fairs. Okay, so my second tip is to create an engaging booth design. You want to create an eye-catching booth with clear signage and a cohesive theme that showcases your brand identity. Uh, make sure that your booth is easy to digest visually, okay? And what I mean by that is you want to avoid overcrowding and also avoid loud patterns and textures that might be too distracting and take away from the chance for shoppers to see your products clearly. All right, my third tip is to have craft fair specific products at your booth. So even if you have like an online storefront, you know, such as Etsy and the .com website that we talked about, I would recommend that you offer some items that are exclusive to craft fairs because this is going to create a sense of urgency to get visitors to come purchase your items on site. So this can help drive sales at your in-person events by offering those exclusive items at shows only. Tip number four, have some interactive displays at your booth. This can be a really good way to engage customers with interactive elements such as a live demonstration or DIY stations at your booth. Um, you can also consider utilizing a tablet to show off the creation process of your items. And if you aren't comfortable sharing the creation process of your items, you know, sometimes you want to keep these things secret and a little bit close to our chest. You can also show off the various ways that your products can be used to help encourage purchases from shoppers. So having this visual element at the booth can really be a way to make your booth stand out from the pack, right? Offer something a little bit different. Now, if you do decide to have a tablet showing some kind of video loop at your booth, make sure that the video loop is very short and I would recommend having captions um, like text captions played throughout the video because crafters are loud, there's a lot of music, there's a lot of noise, there could just be um, too much going on in order to just rely strictly off the visual. So I would type in some captions to help shoppers understand what's going on in the video. Tip number five is all about social media integration. So leading up to an event, you want to promote your booth on social media before and even during the fair, okay? So like in the morning when your booth is all set up and looking nice, take a picture, throw it on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and go ahead and make that last minute post. Use location tags and fair specific hashtags, all right? So if your um, event that you're at has a specific name, use those hashtags and make sure that it's kind of customized to that event. Um, you can also promote your social media profiles at the event, okay? So don't forget to do this during the show. Basically, you wanna think of this as a cycle. Promote the show on social media and promote your social media at the show, okay? So it's kind of just this revolving door of promotion. Even in 2024, this tried and true method is one of the best ways to build your brand. So don't forget about this social media cycle. Okay, tip number six is to build up that email list. Again, this is one of the tried and true old school methods, but you definitely do not want to forget about this. So somewhere at your booth, you should have a sign-up sheet or even a QR code for your email newsletter. Uh, you want to collect emails in order to have some sort of direct line to people who are interested in your business and in your booth. 
after the event, I would recommend that you thank visitors for coming to check out your booth and check out your items. And one thing that you can do to enhance this thank you email is to provide all of these people with your future event calendar for the rest of the year. Okay, so you wanna have this ready. Ideally, like some sort of graphic is nice to have um, because this way you can also print this out and have it at your booth. But for that email uh, sign up, this is definitely something that you wanna provide these people with so that they can find you at your next event. Okay, tip number seven is a relatively basic one, but you do not wanna forget about it. And that is to offer variety in product pricing. So you wanna offer products at multiple price points so that you appeal to basically people no matter what their budget is, okay? So if they come and they're willing to spend, great. Then you have some high dollar items that hopefully will boost those profits for the day. But you also don't want to forget about people who might have a smaller budget and they're willing to make purchases, but if you don't have something there for them, well, then you're just missing out entirely. All right, so you wanna have kind of like a high, a middle, and a low tier set up at your booth with different price points that appeal to hopefully everybody. Tip number eight, we're gonna talk about customer service. So mainly we're gonna discuss the balance of being approachable and informative, but then also being able to give your shoppers a little bit of space and breathing room as they browse your booth. Don't forget that excellent customer service can set you apart from other vendors. Part of the experience um, that shoppers get at craft fairs, it's not just about your items, it's not just about your displays and presentation, it's also about you, the vendor, and how you interact with the shoppers, okay? So it is very important to try to maintain that balance of being available to people and being informative when it's called upon, but also being able to be okay with letting customers browse and kind of take their own time sometimes. So just try to find that balance at your booth and that's how you're gonna have the most success with customer service as a vendor. All right, and so for this tip, it is limited time offers. Now we did sort of touch on this earlier with having event exclusive products, okay? So that's also a way that you can create a sense of urgency for shoppers at the booth. But another thing that you can do is offer event exclusive deals and discounts. So one thing I wanna be very clear on is that you never wanna do this like on a whim, okay? You always wanna have this planned in advance and make it very well known that you're going to have some sort of discount or deal at your booth because the reason why you don't want to do it sort of last minute is that it can appear that you're doing panic pricing during an event just to move stock now this is never a good idea at an event you guys it's gonna it's probably gonna anger the vendors around you okay because when vendors start to plummet their prices during an event it puts pressure on all the other vendors at the event to kind of compete with prices that are dropping around them okay so it makes their prices that they've been rolling with the entire day feel suddenly inadequate okay so that's always um, a good habit to get into is if you're going to do discounts and bundle pricing things like that just make sure that you're rolling with it all day long, that you have your prices um, displayed, okay? So you wanna have some kind of board or some sort of sign that offers the deal and makes the deal well known um, so that you're not doing it suddenly during an event. Tip number 10, something that's starting to become a little bit more relevant as the years go on, and uh, one of the methods that I would consider somewhat new school, is to highlight sustainable practices. So if there's any kind of sustainability of your products or your practices, um, this is a really good thing to notify shoppers about. So if you have some sort of eco-conscious um, process or method in your creations, then this is a great thing to advertise in some way. Okay. So it can be a big selling point and really a sense of pride in vendors now. So um, like I said, this is kind of like a little bit of an up and coming and newer thing to the craft fair community. So don't be afraid to let the shoppers know about any sustainable practices in your business. 
All right, so for tip number 11, we're gonna talk about strong narratives. So think about what kind of compelling stories are behind either your crafts or just you in general as an artist and how you can convey that to your audience. Uh, consider having handouts or even maybe some photographs in various parts of your booth that can help to provide a backstory to your creations or to you as an artist. Uh, don't forget that shoppers are attending craft fairs because they get to meet the makers. Okay, so this is it's an exciting part for the shoppers. And if you can help to build off that experience, then that's just going to help you out even more. Tip number 12, let's talk about packaging and presentation. Ensure that your products are attractively packaged. Consider the ease of transport for customers after they purchase something from your booth. Um, you might be surprised how many people take this into consideration before they make a purchase. How are they gonna get it to their car? How are they gonna get it from their car to their house? All these things, um, if something is delicate, are you packaging it? well? Is it going to be um, secure enough to make it to people's houses and not be damaged? Take all these things into consideration and make it an easy decision for shoppers at your booth, okay? So you don't want to even have people thinking about whether or not they should buy something from you just because of the packaging, just because of the presentation. So just make sure that you're handling this ahead of time. All right, so this next tip, it takes a little bit of back end work, maybe some administration type of work that we all might not be fans of, but it can be worth it. And that is to have some sort of customer loyalty reward program. Offering some sort of loyalty program or discount program for repeat customers. Um, like I said, yes, it does take some work, but it can be a really good way to start to build a very loyal following for your business. Doing things to make sure that you have repeat customers is a great way to ensure that you're setting yourself up for long-term success for your business because of the fact that you're not relying off of brand new customers every single time that you go out to a new craft fair. All right, so if you have some reason for people to keep coming back to you, again, that can kind of just keep that momentum rolling and help to build up your business. Tip number 14 is one of my favorites, definitely an old school method, but that is to do test runs of your booth setup. I cannot emphasize how important this is and something that is a really good off season activity too. So a lot of craft fair vendors, Typically, after Christmas, usually like January, February, they'll they'll take some time off from doing craft fairs just because it really slows down. Not a great time for craft fairs. So uh, take this time, of course, to rest and recover and recharge your batteries 100%. But one of the things that you can do in order to start game planning for the next year is do these practice setups with your booth. So think about the most common booth size that you typically have at an event. Um, for a lot of people, that's 10 by 10 if you're in the U.S., but you know, map it out in your garage, in your, a lot of people can't do it in their yards this time of year. <laughs> But if you have a room that's big enough, maybe in your basement, maybe your garage, whatever, just start to map things out and look at the different ways that you can set your booth up. Think about it from not only your perspective as a vendor, but more importantly, think about it from the shopper's perspective as they approach your booth. Um, can they walk into it or around it comfortably? Really try to think about this from their perspective because, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you're doing is you're trying to attract as much um, foot traffic into and around your booth as possible. So have fun with it, do some test runs and see what you can come up with for your booth. Tip number 15 is very, very important and that is inventory management. You're gonna wanna keep a well-stocked inventory but not over clutter your space, okay? So it's gonna be like this balance between having your stuff stocked but being organized. Organization is very, very important in the craft fair industry, especially as a vendor. Remember that inventory management also isn't just about how much product you have made, okay? You have to also consider your raw materials to craft your products. The reason why is because as the year goes on and you start selling at craft fairs and you have shows lined up, 
Maybe you do really well at an event and you get close to selling out. Well, that's great, but then you are also creating a little bit of an issue with inventory management now, and maybe you don't have enough stock to roll into the next event with. So you wanna be sure that you have yourself set up with enough raw materials throughout the entire year in case you need to craft some more materials in between events in order to have yourself be prepared to sell at every single event you have planned. So think about this entire process, look at your raw materials, look at the inventory that you will have on hand and try to judge whether or not that's gonna be enough for each show as you go throughout the year. Tip number 16 is also a preventative tip and that is weather preparedness. So for all you outdoor vendors, be prepared with canopy weights, rain covers, um, canopy sidewalls are also fantastic, and wind resistant displays. So can your displays be weighed down or even can they be clamped down to a table? Sometimes we see vendors use those little um, like hand clamps to make sure that things stay in place on the table. That's all fine. You'd rather have that than something tipping over. You want to just be sure that your booth remains safe for shoppers to enter at all times. Okay, so that's the most important thing you need to be worrying about. Um, keeping your product protected from the elements is actually secondary to the safety issue. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You want to just be prepared for all the unique challenges that weather can bring on, especially the wind and the rain, and be ready for those challenges. Tip number 17 is to network with other vendors. You want to build relationships with the fellow vendors around you um, in order to potentially do some collaborations or just, you know, sharing some general wisdom from fair to fair. Um, avoid networking just for a social media follow, okay, just to get that, you know, next follower, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with exchanging information and following each other, but do it with intent. Truly connect with the people that are around you. The next tip I have is to adapt and evolve. So you want to be sure that you're keeping up with trends and feedback to continuously adapt your product offerings and setup. Okay, so you want to be aware of how other vendors are setting up their booths and Another thing that you should look out for too is like any kind of technology that they're using. So maybe they have some sort of inventory management system or something for their transactions that they're doing. Just remember that you are also at a craft fair with an opportunity to learn things. Um, you never want to blatantly copy what other people are doing, but just observe what's happening around you. And maybe you can take bits and pieces of information and, you know, make it into your own and um, incorporate it into your existing booth with what you're already doing. Number 19, I highly recommend that at this point, all vendors are using some kind of professional business cards. Um, you want to have all the basic contact information on there. So your business name, what your business creates, all right? And then your name as the creator, and then some piece of contact information. Um, generally, phone numbers aren't you know relevant for vendors. Um, but I would highly recommend an email. And then if you have some sort of .com website or a social media handle you want to put on there, that's great. On the back side, or if you can squeeze it on the front somewhere, somewhere on the card, you should have a QR code that goes to your presence online and make it the most desired place for people to go okay so if you're trying to build up your facebook if you're trying to build up your presence on etsy or your com website whatever just send people to that using a qr code because that is pretty much a necessity on business cards at this point Okay, and one thing I would recommend that vendors incorporate into their booth is some sort of a checkout area. Now, this becomes very, very difficult to do if you have very small booths, okay? So if you only have like a six-foot table, well, then you're not going to have like a dedicated checkout area on a six-foot table. But 
if you are an outdoor vendor or you do like 10 by 10 or even 10 by 20 booths, something larger, then it's a great idea to have a checkout area. Uh, you want to incorporate the digital payment methods that we talked about earlier, you know, like the square card readers or the tap to pay, whatever. All that stuff is great to put into the booth just to give people as many options as possible. Also, obviously, don't forget about cash because cash is still going to be very relevant at craft fairs, even in 2024 for most areas and people. So in your checkout area, you also want to make sure that you have shopping bags and business cards on hand for every transaction that you make. Okay, so you want to have that ready to go for that package and presentation that we talked about earlier. You want to make the checkout area its own zone separate from your product display. Okay, so the reason why you want to keep these separate is because if there's a shopper who is purchasing an item with you, that can take like a couple of minutes for that whole thing to go down. And maybe you start talking and it turns into like five minutes. In the meantime, there might be other shoppers coming into your booth and you want to make sure that the person who's doing the transaction isn't blocking the view of any of your products. Okay. So that's why you want to keep these areas separate so that the shopping zone can be the shopping zone and the transaction area can be the transaction area. Tip number 21 is to attend workshops and these can be either online or in person. The point is, is that you should never stop improving. Even if you're a veteran vendor who has years of experience doing craft fairs, there's always something new to pick up. Maybe there's some kind of new technique or new thing coming to the craft fair industry, or maybe just to brush up on the skills you might already have. But, you know, all of us, maybe sometimes we get into some bad habits or pick up some bad habits and we kind of get away from what was working for us originally. So, it's always good to just stay aware of your skills, sharpen them, and bring on some new skills. Now, the next thing that I want you to think about in 2024 and frankly beyond is collaborations. Um, this might be a little bit of a tricky subject to wrap your head around as a craft fair vendor because a lot of times as craft fair vendors, we're kind of thinking selfishly, okay? So um, we, some of the things that we think about is I don't want to say self-centered, but you know, we don't want competition at events with similar vendors and we don't want to be placed next to somebody who does something similar. But one thing I want you to think about is the possibility of network and collaboration with your fellow vendors. Um, think about your creations, what you make, um, are there other local products, brands, or even creators that you can work with in a mutually beneficial way. Um, maybe that maybe there's some kind of design you can make with somebody else that is almost like a blend of your two brands. Or maybe you can do some content creation online where you do like a dual FaceTime thing or you go live together and the two of you can blend your audiences in a way that benefits you both. Okay. So, you know, you have your own following, somebody else has their own following, but if you blend them together, maybe there can be some like cross customer action going on there and you can help to build each other up. All right. So just be open, at least be open to these possibilities because if you have the mindset that, no, I'm just going to go solo and I don't want to be involved with other people, you could very well be missing out on ways to build up your brand that you're just not even giving yourself a chance to be aware of. Okay. So like I said, just be open to it and you never know what possibilities could come with it. My 23rd tip for 2024 is to have a personal touch at your booth. Again, this is a little bit of an old school method, but I would really recommend having this at your booth. Um, you can have handwritten cards as like a thank you note for every transaction that you make at your booth. And that's going to make customers feel really valued. Also, don't forget to truly listen to your customers as they're talking to you. So you could just be engaged in a casual conversation with your customers, but think about what they're saying because it might be giving you clues to 
things that you can recommend at your booth that is almost like a personal recommendation based on what they've been talking about. Okay, so items that might be a great fit for them based on their specific situation. Also, there is the chance to offer customization at your booth. That is another great way to add a personal touch is to let people pick different colors or textures or sizes, or maybe there's like a certain phrase that they can have um, on your item. So think of all the different ways that you can add a personal touch to your booth, and that's going to really make a big impact on shoppers, and it's going to let them remember you. Okay, finally, for tip number 24, it's to analyze and reflect. After every single fair, analyze what worked for you and what didn't, and apply those lessons to your next event. In my opinion, this is probably the single most important thing that you can do as a craft fair vendor, is just to reflect off the information that you have, okay? So when you're at a craft fair, even if it's with like a notebook and a pad and paper or whatever, just write down random things that are coming to your mind all day or text it to yourself, whatever you do. There's going to be so many instances throughout the day that you are thinking to yourself, okay, I have to remember that for next time. But if you don't write them down or if you don't jot them down in your phone or whatever, the day is going to go on. And when you try to reflect later on all the things that you could have learned throughout the day, it's going to be hard to recall all that and you're going to miss some things. Okay. So don't forget to take notes during the events that you can reflect later in order to get better and better at every event. One of the things I like to say on this channel is if you get like 1% better at something, at something at your booth every time, by the time you get to the end of the year, like that's going to be compounded. Okay. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It's going to turn into like this giant ball. Okay. Just be sure that you are valuing all the information that you have at your disposal and making the best of it. So I want to thank you for watching. If you've made it to this point, uh, thank you. Please tell a friend about the channel. I'm working really hard to put the best tips I can possibly think of together for craft fair vendors. I'm going to be um, doing some videos for craft fair organizers and hosts coming up in 2024. So we're going to start to talk about all elements of craft fairs. And I think the episodes for the organizers are also going to greatly benefit the vendors and vice versa because... Really, we're all trying to get on the same page, and there's a lot of things that vendors want out of organizers, and there's a lot of things that organizers want out of vendors. So why not get all of us together and just start talking about it? Feel free to drop a comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.